Got a lot of nice use out of that. Well, Dad, thank you very much for staying up to be interviewed. Well, I'm very glad to. And I hope that all the minutia of many, many years ago will come back to me clear as a bell. Clear as a bell. Well, let's say a little, a little prayer. Well, to begin with, my mother and father were born in 1882. That's my mother. And my father, 1883. And they were both farmers' children. And their families went back through many generations being farmers in Sweden. And being farmers in Sweden was really tough because Sweden at that time was a very poor country. That's my last page. Don't pull it. No, oh, that's your last page. That's okay, my last page. <laughs> it's glued so right, they, right to the cover. So they grew up on farm life, sort of hard. And uh, their parents, uh, they had beards and uh, were taciturn, hard working during the day, had nothing to say at night. And, um, and that's the origins of the Holmeses mm -hmm. going back to Sweden. Part of the family uh, was, is from center of Sweden, Vermland. And my father's farming days were on the outskirts of Stockholm. Mm -hmm. And his farm now, that they worked for many years, has been overcome by the city of Stockholm. The suburbs just ran over them and <laughs> kept on going. So there's no trace of the farm left except for a lake and for sort of a hill. It grows up a few hundred feet uh, on top of a uh, rise. And my first experience was as a very young child. My mother and father went back to Sweden many times, six times, I believe, because although they wound up in the United States just before World War II and more or less got stranded here or reelected to be stranded here, they could never quite make up their minds. Do they want to stay in America or do they want to go back to the wonderful memories in Sweden where they grew up? Mm -hmm. how, how did you feel when you went to Sweden? I was bug-eyed. It was a wonderful experience. I met many uncles and aunts. Uh, the families were numerous. My, my mother, uh, her, she had seven brothers and sisters. And um, my father, Helmer, he had uh, Helga. And uh, no, I believe he only had a brother. So the numerous family was on my mother's side. And they were all pretty wonderful because they were so different from New York City where I was being brought up. The country was completely different. Mm -hmm. More modern. Really? More modern, more, uh, uh, more interesting. It seemed to be that the living was good there even though everybody was quite poor. Uh-huh. Did you ever see your dad with his father? No. No? No, I never did. Because usually when I traveled to Sweden, it was with my mother, and my father stayed back home working. Oh. So he did not accompany uh, us on our trips, but he made trips himself, but he made them individually. By himself? by himself or in connection with work. He, he rested himself away from the farm, as did my mother. They went, both went into service, which was a common thing for uh, 
modest people to do who don't have the advantages of education. Now my father was a driver, which was semi-professional in those days because cars didn't have self-starters and they were quite intricate, so you had to be a pretty good mechanic. And my mother had the usual attributes of being a good cook or a good housekeeper, so that's the path that she took. And uh, they worked for quite prominent people, I think. Uh, the reason they could get back to Europe or get to the United States was they were the entourage of these very wealthy people who were diplomats and millionaires and the people of the world. Uh, one in particular that I remember was August Belmont, a very famous name, Belmont. Is that the Belmont race? Is that named after Yes, him? Belmont race truck. And, and, <laughs> other Belmont uh, entities. Well, they worked for Belmont and they traveled with him. Both uh, of them, Ma Mama and Papa. I think he was ambassador to Washington. From where? From Germany, maybe. Austria. Or England. And um, after uh, their service with Belmont ended, they, uh, they worked uh, my father worked for Vanderbilt, W.K. Vanderbilt. So uh, the North Shore Palace and the, uh, the wonderful places there that are museums now, we used to visit those when, when I was a child. Mm. And uh, although all this sounds very good, it was very painful to me. <laughs> Why? I didn't like the idea of my parents working as servants, and I didn't like the idea of them waiting on other people, and it just rubbed against me. I'm surprised I didn't turn into a raging communist <laughs> as a result, but it was very, very painful to me when I was a young man, mm -hmm. when I was a child. Yeah. But we had a good time, and we had a good life, and we grew up... Uh, I grew up with my five sisters who were all really very nice people and we got along so well, the sisters and I, mm -hmm. and did right through the decades. Now did you ever see Mama with her parents? Yes, I have seen her with her parents and I think I have a photograph of her with her parents and with um, all the brothers and sisters lined up on their farm in central Sweden, a place called Grums, G-R-U-M-S. Um, and I have a reminder every day of that family group because there was one shy sister called Wendla, or Wendla, W-E-N-D-L-A, and she used to do stitching and um, and needlework, and she uh, she initialed a group of uh, Irish linen uh, dish towels mm. with red red letters. Mm. It's a V or a W, interchangeable, and you can, can never wear out that linen. We should, we use them all the time, even today. So I have one hanging on the stove with a red V on it for Vesla. Reminds me of that family group which has dispersed and for all intents and purposes is gone. Oh, don't you think there's a lot of them left in Sweden in Grums? You have to speak louder. Oh, don't you think that there's many left in Grums? Everybody had children. I'm sure there's grandchildren and great-grandchildren. But you mean all your aunts and uncles? Yeah, they're all gone. Yeah. They're all gone because I was a child. They were grown up. So uh, time marches on. Yeah. I remember going to Grums and 
we had coffee at somebody's house. Oh yeah, coffee's a big thing in Sweden. And I remember Kala, I remember Uncle Kala, he had all those pictures on his living room table. My mother's brother, Kala, bald had this and a little bit hard of hearing, couldn't see well, but he was a real character. He used to pinch the girls and um, he was laughing all the time. He was a happy, a happy soul. Mm. And he had a boat, there's a huge lake in the center of Sweden called the uh, Lantern. And uh, all the sawmills rim that lake and they float the logs off logging industry and um, he was in that industry logging cutting trees and he had a, bo a bo wooden boat that he built himself he used to go fishing took me out fishing on the lake now who made the blue clock who made the blue clock the blue clock was made by some local artisan in around eight 1840. That wasn't our great great grandfather who made it. No, it wasn't. It was <laughs> it was bought by a from a carpenter, a skilled carpenter, and it was a wedding present for my mother's mother and father when they got married around 1840. Mm. So the clock dates from 1840. It's hand hewn and very primitive, a true antique. And it works It works just fine for decades. Do you know what happened to it? What happened? We had it up at the loft down in uh, Lower Manhattan. We and had a party there one time. Oh, and, and that was the end of the clock? Yeah, the clock took a bad beating. Uh, hands disappeared. Really? And the thing was rattling. So uh, it needs a major overhaul. But uh, being a true antique, its um, value, my guess is six or seven, eight thousand dollars. It's hmm. not, it's ju not just a, a wooden artifact, it's a true antique from Sweden. The nice thing about the clock are the curves sort of a sexy clock. It has hips, rounded face. Yeah, I'm listening. Is it still going? Yeah. What are you doing? I'm just bringing the tripod up so I don't shoot up at you, but I shoot, you know, eye level. Oh, okay. Anyhow, it's an attractive clock and a family heirloom. Okay, Dad, so what I really was curious about was whether you'd ever seen, you know, Papa with his family and Mama with hers. Never saw my dad with his family, but I've been with his family for years. When I was 12, we made a trip and they decided to leave me in, really? gr in Grumps. In Grumps or in... Uh... No, no, in Grumps. <laughs> I wish it had been in Stockholm. But they left me in Grumps for, for one year. Really? Uh, I went to the local school. Who took care of you? Uh, my my uh, grandmother. Oh, really? Yeah. Was that nice? They're taciturn. They don't talk. They don't touch you. They don't hug you. <laughs> they're, they're very distant. Wow. Um, but I survived. And I was um, a personage at school. Oh, I bet they loved because you. Because I was the American, and um, my uh, I was pretty shy in those days. It sort of built up my ego. To uh, be the man about town. No. I was always very, very shy, Milan. Yeah. Extremely shy and reserved. Okay. And I still am today. Yeah, I know you are. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, Dad, now I wanted to ask you also about being sick, how you feel about that. You have to speak up. I said I wanted to ask you about being sick, having cancer and... Oh, being cancer and having uh, the diabetes. sands. The what sands of my life are running out, and that's no problem to me. You know why? I did everything. I did the most 
wonderful things. I wanted to be out and see the world and, and embrace new areas. I did it all. I was never very acquisitive or doing it for monetary gain. I just did it because it was fun. And I will say that I went to work decade after decade looking forward to my day. It was fun to be on the job and it was fun to be where I was. The only thing that I worried about was maybe a catastrophe something happened, maybe they cut the budget and eliminate my job and I get sent home and where will I be then? I have to look for a job where you have to work regardless of whether you like it or not. Now, I'm sure you spent a lot of time thinking back on your past. Do you spend a lot of time thinking back about the past? I do, yes. Now I reminisce a lot. So what are your favorite time periods? Well, I go into a time period and I explore it, and uh, they're all pretty good. Huh? They're all pretty good. Growing up as a teenager in, near, in Manhattan, near Times Square, having lots of fun with the Broadway shows and the showgirls, it, it was a reality that most kids wouldn't ever have. Wait here, let me sit. Let me sit on this side. And. Um, then once I started to travel, I, uh, I got a couple of assignments that I really liked. Which ones did you really like? Well, Scandinavia for one. I was five years in Oslo and that was lovely. And that was lovely for my family because it's a great place for children, for skiing, for sports, for going to school. It's a really a happy place. Didn't you find it happy? Yeah. 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 Ter Wonderland. Terrific place. And um, then when I learned my trade a little bit, I could choose my assignments. Now, when you choose your assignments, you, um, you have a lot of competition. But the assignments that I chose, <laughs> no competition. Addis Ababa, wild as can be, and without immunities. Daddy, did you meet Haile Selassie? Yes, I did. What was, and, he, and what, so, was he, what was he like? So, well, he was a little bird man, a little bird man, uh, very well dressed the way you would see him in photos. Uh -huh. And um, when I first arrived there, the rule was he used to drive around in a great big Rolls Royce, a black Rolls Royce, which was very tall, looked like a cartoon Rolls Royce. And he would be driving around the streets of Addis and when you see it approaching, pull over to the side, get out of your car, stand beside the car, and you look him right in the eye as he goes by. This was the protocol, and that happened many times. Now, he did invite all of us into the palace one Thanksgiving when we, or one Christmas when we went to ser serenade him. So. Your mom was invited in. I was away to a, at, at a farm outside of Alice trying to buy a turkey, so I missed that opportunity. But he was a um, something out of medieval history. Mm. So that was Alice Ababa. And he had a very strong sense of Africa and oh, Africa's yes. destiny. I, I volunteered for. Uh, I have spent 10, 11 years in Africa. They were very happy. I, vo I volunteered for uh, Libya with Gaddafi. You know what your mother said? Did you meet Gaddafi? Well, I had to line up at the airport when dignitaries were coming, and he would walk past us, you know, with the diplomatic corps lining up uh, at his beck and call. So I was very close to him many times. But you, did you never speak to him? No. no. But while we were waiting for the plane, he and the other revolutionaries would play softball, you know, they throw a ball around and horse around. They were all in their early 30s <laughs> and they were just like kids. So that was sort of fun to see. But um, uh, when Josie heard about the assignment, 
She looked at me. She said, uh, you're trying to kill off your family, aren't you? <laughs> oh, she said that? <laughs> yeah. She loved Libya. <laughs> but we had a lot of fun there. We had a lot of fun. Yeah. It was a great assignment. And um, the assignment was 18 months, and I re-upped for an additional 18 months. Uh, but by that time, Josie was in the full accord, and we had such a good time. Uh, we really did. So when you went to Tunisia, Bourguiba was president. He was president, and he was president many years after I left. He lived for a long, long time, the old boy. Now, was he sort of a corrupt dictator type? No. What was he like? No, no. He was uh, the president of the country and uh, beloved by everyone and uh, more or less of a figurehead. The politicians had him up there and he was a unifier of uh, Tunisia. Mm -hmm. The Tunisians, um, Tunisia was another great adventure. Did you, uh, what did you think of the Arab, the Muslim fundamentalists? The, the Muslim fundamentalists? Well, they're wild. And they're dangerous. You, Did you meet any? You, you and I met some when uh, in Tunisia one afternoon. I, I took you and um, I think it was um, uh, Ingrid. We went into a restaurant on the main street, and I didn't know it was a Hamas headquarters or something like that, Arab <laughs> League. So we sat down. There was nobody there, but it was a nice, clean place. We wanted lunch, and uh, you can always get a good fish lunch in any restaurant in uh, Tunis. So finally a guy shuffled up uh, over and he really looked like a desperado. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, um, can we have lunch? So, so he, looked, he glared at me and then finally he nodded. Yeah. I said, well, we'd like to have fish. Do you have any fish? Grill up some fish. We'll have a fish lunch. I think I remember that. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. So the fish arrived. It was all blackened. Do you remember how black it was? No. Well, uh, years later, that was very popular to blacken your fish. But they were blacking it, blackened, they blackened our fish to be mean. But anyhow, we had a pretty good fish lunch. And we got out of there with our skins, which was lucky in a way. That was a great adventure, really. Yeah. But um, uh, the best one, of course, was um, not um, Tunisia, but... Um, uh, Somalia. No, the one with... Uh, Gaddafi? Gaddafi, yeah. Gaddafi, such a dog. <laughs> 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 he turned into a gangster, turned into a nice guy, and then he turned into a gangster. And then he became afraid that, they were, uh, that people were trying to unseat him as the uh, supreme ruler. So there was a, there was a, a military uh, training school in Benghazi, mm -hmm. I think it was. And uh, he got 22 cadets. Wow. He thought that they were plotting against him. Wow. He hung these 22 beautiful young men. It's terrible. Wow. Too After bad. that, everybody hated him, including myself. Yeah. But anyhow, uh, it went from one assignment to the other. All very good. What was Somalia like? Well, Somalia was uh, a, uh, a nature preserve. I had uh, a whole arsenal of of weapons, had a weapon to shoot at any big game, elephant, buffalo, and um, I had a license to shoot too. Uh, Somalia used to be uh, Italian controlled and the lingua franca there was Italian. So my hunting license was for any animal and then if I shot one, I would have to report it and I'd have to pay the fee. Oh. The fee for an elephant was uh, sixty dollars, I think. Oh, that's so sad. A giraffe was uh, forty dollars. 
a buffalo was uh, 35 or 40 dollars. But you never shot no, I never. no any of those. No, I couldn't. <laughs> I didn't have the heart. I did loan, loan my gun to uh, which was a, uh, a a cannon, a 375 H&H &H Magnum and it had a projectile like a banana. You know, it was really terribly powerful. And uh, I sighted it in on beer cans, and uh, I could have used it, but I had smaller weapons. I had a 30 6 I had a 12-gauge shotgun, I had a, uh, a 350, no, I had a 44 Magnum pistol, and I had a 22, a 222, which was so, such fun. I had great fun with my weapons. I used to reload the cartridges. So in the middle of the night when I couldn't sleep, everybody in the house would be quiet. Everybody, you couldn't sleep? Everybody was in bed. I would be up reweighing a few grams of, of gunpowder on a scale. Where would you do this? At home. But I mean, which room? Which room? Uh, any, any convenient room. Not my bedroom. The Not living... your bedroom. Huh. So, you know, I used to read a lot at night because I didn't sleep. You didn't sleep? And, sl and you... then some nights I would reload my empty uh, shelves. When did, you, when, were you, when did you first start being unable to sleep at night? Oh, I don't know. I uh, have no idea. I have no idea. When I was a teenager, sometimes I'd be up all night and you know I'd skip sleeping for a day and then the next night I would sleep. And if I stayed up two nights in a row, then I'd play hooky from school and sleep at home to catch up. So you know, the sleep was something that um, was very much disturbed from an early age on. Oh, I wonder why. I wonder why. Oh, I don't know why. Okay, Dad, um, you told me the other day that you were thinking about Gert and Jess and all these people who had, you know, died. Where do you think they are? Well, they're, they're on the other side of a dark curtain in a light, airy place with lots of space. And they're flying around up there <laughs> looking for some of their relatives. <laughs> and who knows, they might be waiting up there somewhere for a, a, a nice cozy spot. <laughs> There's plenty of space. And um, I sort of am very open-minded <laughs> about where they are. <laughs> because the spirit is, uh, is a real thing. And uh, the spirit varies and uh, has to go somewhere. Right. Yeah, it has to go somewhere. Well, where's it going to go? Right to God. <laughs> you hover over, you hover over the bedroom or uh, for a while and watch everybody, and then then you take off. Mm -hmm. So where do you think you'll go? Well, I think that I'll um, I'll slip under the curtain. It's a black curtain. It'll be dark you know, this side. The other side will be bright and sunny and vast and uh, all the travails of the body and of your physical presence here on earth, you just leave it all behind. You'll be perfectly well when you get <laughs> on the other side. <laughs> then, then you have to look around and see if you can find Gertrude or Jess someplace. <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? Now, listen, you know, your grandpa has some space. I mean, my grandpa has some space next to him in Queens, wherever he is, if he's cremated. But you don't want to be cremated, do you? Yes, I do. You want to be cremated? Totally. Totally cremated. Everybody can have a little envelope of You action. want a little spot in the cemetery up here? I don't know. I uh, haven't really uh, started thinking seriously about something like that yet. You know, Margie had her spot in her family vault, but she completely paid for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. The whole, my, you know, my little neighbor who died. 
She so she, she had a place waiting for her. She had a place waiting for her. She'd already played, paid for the casket, and she had very definite instructions about what she wanted, and it was all a done deal. Yeah. So her nieces just had to come in there and follow her wishes. Well, I think it's probably a, a, a ceremony, um, not, a, not a church, maybe, uh, well, we have to give it some thought. Yeah. Now, you were born Lutheran. I was born a Lutheran on at 124 West 83rd Street, right next to the firehouse. The firehouse is still there now. You were born at home? I was born at home, yes. Oh, good for Mama. Mm -hmm. So a midwife delivered you? No, I think it was a doctor. Uh, the doctor's name was, uh, let's see, his son became a director of the Museum of Art. Uh, uh, I haven't thought of him for many years. No, the doctor would come to the house and treat the kids. Mm, and, nice. And also, uh, he would deliver the babies. Yeah. That's wonderful. So you you watched Gertrude and Peggy and. No, no, no. I, I, mother and father always concealed the fact when uh, when uh, Claire was born. Karen thought uh, somebody was killing a chicken in the kitchen, a ridiculous <laughs> thing like that. And um, when my older sister Val got married, she had no idea about sexuality or marriage or sex or anything like that. Very ill prepared. So all that was concealed from us children. Parents didn't know how to pass on that information. Of course, the girls, living protected lives, never picked it up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know how they made out. I'm not, I'm sure, not good, huh? No. Well, I'm sure not bad. Not bad? Uh, Aunt Karen was very happy with Uncle Gene. Aunt Gert was very happy with Uncle Jess. Yes. And Aunt Claire was very happy with Uncle Jiggs. Oh yes, I'm sure that they were. So yes, that's quite true. Uh, Karen was hard to get along with. I'm not so sure that Gene uh, would agree with you, but he was a happy, lucky, go lucky, smiley guy. Always has a topical joke, and I'm sure that they had a good marriage. Uh, oh no, he loved her. Yeah, do you think so? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, without doubt. She's an iron lady. Well, we have a lot of iron ladies in the family. No, you're not supposed to be iron. You're supposed to be soft. Yeah. And um, when uh, Gertrude and I and Claire got together with Karen in recent years, we always used to give her a terrible time. Horrible in Florida there a couple of times. We were after her every minute because she was so rigid. Mm -hmm. And positive and everything. Mm -hmm. Couldn't give a quarter inch on anything. But I loved all my sisters. Yeah, you did. Okay, let's go back to your life and the times you like to think about. What, do you, what is the most unusual thing that you, what was the most unexpected thing that happened maybe in the world that you weren't expecting? The most unexpected thing that happened to me in the world was that I grew up in a family where cultural things didn't exist. Didn't exist. And um, all of us, you know my, your aunt, and you know me, we're not uncultured people. We gathered up culture as best we could. Karen was very wise. She was, took advantage of a free education in New York City, and she graduate, graduated from Hunter College. You had to be a scholar to get in. And she worked very hard, scholastically, to measure up, and she graduated. Now, I was lack, lackadaisical and enjoying growing up without much thought about everything. Sort of empty-headed, uh, Melinda. 
Why do you think that is? You were the only boy. Why do you think you were empty-headed? Bill wasn't empty-headed. Oh, well, Bill, Bill, was, Bill was always thinking Bill, about... Bill is in a different culture. My culture was very simple and poverty-stricken. So when I went into the armed forces, I had another great adventure. I traveled. It just suited me to a T. Other fellows were moping and wishing they were home and having psychological problem. Me? Hey! How long has this been going on? And I enjoyed my time in the armed forces really very much. But what I did is I earned 42 months of free education plus 42 months of uh, subsistence and um, paying my rent place to live. Great. Three benefits. Wow, that's great. Do you know, Melinda, I did not take advantage of that. Oh. What a fool I was. What a fool. It's really regrettable. Somebody should have, I should have had a mentor, I should have had somebody kick me in the behind and said, get into school and earn a degree. That's the surprise. Huh. That's the surprise. So, so starting out with a handicap like that, you know, nice enough looking and well enough mannered, but no education, I managed to find a sort of a semi-professional status eventually, where I had very good status. <laughs> I'd arrive at a new post. They'd send a reporter and write me up for the local paper. You've seen some of the articles. Mm -hmm. And um, after I learned my trade, I could pick my post. See, I fell into it. Mm. And then eventually I had a quasi-status as a professional. Mm -hmm. Really. So what do you think of this life that you had? You were, meeting, you were mostly working for Americans overseas. You, you weren't too in touch with the... No, I was, I was, I was the American overseas. Uh -huh. I was the American. I was at all of the embassies. I knew all the ambassadors. I knew all the personalities of the countries where I was assigned. I had a dream job. That's nice. It's nice to have a dream job, Dad. Now, you travel with me and you experienced some of my, my assignments when you were more grown up. Yeah. What do you think? Well, um, I love traveling. So well, what did you think of our life? Oh, our life was great. Well, our travel? Yeah. Yeah, what? No, I, I think it was great. First class. It was very, it was really wonderful. Come to the States, I'd buy a new car. We'd go riding around. Listen, we, we lived the life of millionaires. Yeah, we had a good life, Dad. We did. No, we did. Yeah. Yes, we did. Now, what about events in the world? What surprised you the most of what you've seen and lived through? What, what, what has surprised you the most of what, you, of what we've lived through? How, how my life turned out. Oh, really? Yes. You didn't think you were going to have a good life? I didn't think so without an education. Oh, really? Yes, that's right. As it, had, as it turned out, I had a glorious life. Yeah, so you, you kind of lucked out. I shared it with uh, Josie and with you kids, dragged you along every place. <laughs> I don't know whether you liked it going from place to place, but it certainly was an adventure. Yeah. Did you miss not having a home? No. We had homes and Josie would arrive at a new post of assignment and out of nothing she would make a comfortable home for all of us. She would decorate it, she would fix it up, and she made a family unit for us any place we were. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Marvelous. Marvelous. Yeah. Yes, no, it's marvelous. Yeah. 
Um, what about in world events? Has anything really surprised you? World events? Uh, I'm very cynical. So <laughs> I'm so cynical now. So what's well, the outlook for you know our little ones, Billy and Sarah, Natasha as? Oh, they'll all they'll all have their wonderful lives, and uh, yeah. so will you, Melinda. Yeah, but what kind of worlds do you think they'll live in? Doesn't matter. You, you find your place. You make your little nest, and you do the best you can, and that's a life. And then you pass it on to uh, children, grandchildren. So uh, that really doesn't matter too much. Mm -hmm. The world, the world around us. Mm -hmm. The thing that has disappointed me is, is the lack of of morals or compassion that the American people seem to lack. Yeah, it's surprising, isn't it? It's surprising. Very surprising, surprising that we su that surprising. we put up with it. How they they put up with gross cruelty to a people and are concerned in a very greedy way with their own concerns. It's disheartening. Yeah. Yeah. It's disheartening. No, absolutely. And most people in the State Department uh, are uh, aren't really, really friends of international organizations or politicians because we, we know more than they do and we are very critical. Yeah. Okay, Dad, so what do you want to pass on to this next generation that we have next coming up? Next generation, have fun. Little Natasha yeah, and... Follow your star. Ben. Hey, do what you want to do. You know, it's all very fast. Is that it? <laughs> That's it. Do what you want to do? Money, money usually doesn't mean too much. You have to have a certain amount of money. You know, if you're flat broke, then you're miserable. Right. But you need a, you need a certain base. Right. A certain amount of money. Ah, but okay. by and large, follow your star. Follow your star. Absolutely. And um, let's talk about your own life a little bit. So you're really surprised that it turned out so well. Yes, I am. Uh huh. What are some of the things that make you the happiest? Well, um, I like my family. <laughs> they're a happy bunch. <laughs> I do. They, they're all going to be okay. So, what do you think about Stephanie and Ingrid being so far away? Stephanie? Oh, I miss her an awful lot. She's a devil, you know. And, um, I miss her jokes and I miss her mischief. Yeah. But she's doing all right. Yeah, what do you think she of her? She doesn't want an old pup, uh, an old, uh, uh, what's a good word, uh, an old, old boy like me underfoot over under there. She has a very active, uh, interesting life going on. Who, Steph? Steph, yeah. Oh, no, she wants you to come visit her. I know she does, but I don't think I can manage it. Huh? Yeah. I've reached a point now where I'm so tired. I have no energy. I have certain things that I would love to do. Can't do them. Huh? What would you love to do? Well, there's a few little things I could trim in the uh, yard. For example, I, I got out a bunch of photographs the other day to look for a picture of my mother, which I didn't have. I found one. Just a, it's an awful one. and. Uh, the boxes, uh, two weeks ago, the boxes are still laying around my bedroom open. I should close them and, you know, finish it up. Where's the energy to do that? I should do it. Well, I find with me that it's not a question of energy, it's a question of motivation. And once I get started, I just keep going. That's the difficult part. It's not I've, so I've much tried that <laughs> when you run out of gas. <laughs> your motivation won't help you. Ah. So I have a very low energy level right now. Uh -huh. What do you think about Ingrid being in Portland? Oh, I think that's wonderful. Now, are you ever going to go see her house? No. I should go see her house, really. I don't have the energy to do it. 
Maybe I will get my guts together and just go. Well, you know what, Dad? <laughs> There's no time like the present. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's now or never. Well, it may not necessarily never. You know, so now, Pete Seeger is your age. Mm -hmm. And Morley Safer. Did you see Morley Safer yeah, on uh, the other night? It's disgusting. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's very... It's, it's mysterious why some people are vigorous old age and other people yeah, don't. It's right. very mysterious. Now, I have to say that I don't particularly remember you being very active these last 20 years. Mm. You know, you were always one. You loved to come home and stretch out and read your newspaper. So you didn't really have, you did a lot of things. You know, you'd go see your sisters and all that. But you... No, I was supporting the family, shopping, cooking. Cooking. I did uh, cooking at the loft, don't you remember? Oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I used to get two big shopping bags every day, <laughs> bring it in there, and Dominique would right away eat the fruit. <laughs> oh, he would? <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I was very, uh, hustling there very much. Yeah. And, um, and, and on into the decade. Life was interesting. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Life was interesting. An occasional right. trip to Europe, an occasional trip to the West Coast. It all worked out fine. Yeah, it did work out fine. So, what else has made you really happy about your life? I'm just fishing around to see, like, what do you want to pass on to the kids? You said have a good time. Just, just follow your star. But to get that basic education. You really have to do that. It's absolutely necessary. There's no way to get around it. Yeah. No way to get around it. Well, let's see, Dad. I wanted to really ask you about your parents, and I did that. And I wanted to ask you about... Um, what surprised you the most and what you want to pass on to your children? Oh, what didn't happen that you would have liked to have seen? What didn't happen? Yeah. Did anything not happen that really disappointed you? No. I can't think of a thing. Um, no. no. It's a dead end. Dead end. And um, uh, let's see. I'm doing manual focus instead of automatic focus. So I've got your eye nicely focused there. Well, Melinda, we've had a nice session. I've enjoyed it. And I want to tell you I have a batch of photos upstairs I want to, you to take a look at because you are a good conservator of family history and photos. Mm -hmm. You'll find the ones that I have, well, in the beginning here we had, uh, uh, Mom and I had a small camera called a Zeiss Icon, a mm -hmm. Contessa, 35 millimeter with a good lens and it had uh, Tessar mm -hmm. 2.8 lens. Mm -hmm. We had three of those cameras. So this little format you'll find early on. Yeah. Family photographs. Uh -huh. Now, one camera broke, one was stolen during a move, packing up, Oh. and the other one, one, one broke. The, uh, I don't know what happened to the other one, probably stolen. So we had those, this small format, but excellent sharp lens. If you examine this picture here, sharp, oh, these are yeah, and well developed, so they're not turning brown. Yeah, a lot of those family pictures from '85 or '75. Yeah, good, good shape, and I have some upstairs for you. Okay, great. Well, listen, Dad, thank you very much. Okay, it's been a lot of fun. Been a lot of fun. And You've been very patient, and now you have to do the dishes. Yes, right? I do. <laughs> okay, sweetheart, thanks a lot. Thank you very much for doing them. Bye. That's very nice of you.
36 waist. What's your waist? 44. Oh, well, okay, so... 44, man. You're out of luck. You are out of luck. And what about the red ones? Ian? What's your waist? The red ones are 36. My waist is 22. 22? I have no. some things that will fit you. Here's a nice pair of great flannel oh, stuff. Yeah. Oh, It's such a boom. This year. Can we put a little hem on this, Mama? Billy boy. And this is a nice regard, and so you That's nice, that would fit Melinda. No, it's, it's, it's a child. Small. I guess I need a little board for that color. Well, you, you take care of the fire. Yeah. 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 So, so Melinda, how is this life? No, those are all tiny babies. Life is good. How's life, oh, Dad? Tiny life is good. Mm -hmm. uh, Doing well. No, no. Mm -hmm. I have some what kind of what leaves. kind of wine did you buy? Beg your pardon. What kind of wine did you buy? Oh, no, just red wine. Mm -hmm. That's why I have to take it. Okay. In. So please find a find a little spot for that. Now after all my work. So what do you want to do with those vegetables, Guillaume? Before I wash them and slice them. Oh, so, so anybody can do that, right? Yeah. Anybody, especially somebody that do it from a room, my mom Oh, no. Me, today I'm not cooking. Oh. Oh, come on, mom. On that fire. To make the fire work, honey. Oxygen. Okay, are you going to go get your tools or should I, should I hook you up to a mic? I am going to get my tools. Okay. Where are you going to get your tools? My girlfriend's house. Mm-hmm. Should I come with you? Is it going to be a nice ride? No, it's going to be a very short ride. It's just down the street and back. Mm -hmm. And are her tools in the house? Nope. Attention, mon frère. Pardon? Not bad, not now. Let's see here. Actually, I'm going to do a little rearranging of the coals. Mm -hmm. Look, I wonder if Anne wants to get a chicken. She talked, how was your chicken last night? Is there any left? I think there's a little left. I, I didn't put away the leftovers. And I didn't look in the fridge. Roasted vegetables. Yeah. And uh, Italian sausage. Mmm. And hamburger. Mm -hmm. Oops. And how often do you cook? I cook every now and then, not that often. Uh -huh. once, once, once a month, twice a month. Dice and chop the vegetables, okay? Uh -huh. Sprinkle a little salt. Uh -huh. All right, a little salt helps to take the bitter taste out of the eggplant. Mmm, mm, gorgeous eggplant. Mm. American... Uh, uh, America's finest. Fertilized fields. Uh, pesticides. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. All those wonderful things. All those wonderful things. Just a little olive oil on here, a little sprinkling of salt. The meat cooks a lot faster and the vegetables need, need to cook, need a little more time to cook. Mm -hmm. There's more vegetables and it's hard to fit them on the grill. Run upstairs in just a minute. Oh you do? Okay, that means I have to run with you. Okay. What are you gonna get? I don't know. We'll run together. <laughs> Okay, sweetheart, I wanted to ask you questions like whether you believed in God. I don't believe in God. Okay, and how old you are? I'm 49. And when is your birthday? January 4th. How many months is that away from now? Oh, uh, six months or something. Because if you can sort of situate us by saying the date, for instance. Like today is July 6th. Uh-huh. Today is we just celebrated Independence Day. God bless America. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I thought you said you didn't believe in God. Oh, I don't believe in God, but I'm happy enough to invoke the name of God. I frequently do. Mm -hmm. Oops, now I don't have any... Um, Where do you think we came from? Oh, just chemical reaction. Okay, the peppers look good. The peppers don't take as long to cook. So? Just dice them up like so. Uh-huh. Ah, merci, maman. Tiens, I'll use them both. Thank you. They're wonderful. C'est un peu difficile parce que tu es dans l'image... 
non, je me mets là comme ça, je peine un petit peu cachée. Ah, Coucou. tiens, <rire> ma maman chérie que j'adore. Ta maman chérie. So, sweetheart, what were you expecting out of life when you were a young child? Not much. Mm -hmm. What did you hope to do? No, nothing. I didn't have any real aspirations. So you were sort of empty-headed? Yeah, empty-headed and not exactly uh, goal-oriented. Uh -huh. and, and what happened to you? Oh, I'm still that way. Empty-headed and not goal-oriented? Yeah, I'm just happy-go-lucky guy. <laughs> oh, let's see. Hmm. Good question. Well, fondest memories? Hmm. That looks pretty good. Yeah, the, zu uh, the zucchini looks fantastic. The zucchini is always a big hit. Whoa, I just lost almost the best piece of zucchini. Luckily, it did not go anywhere too bad. Do you want me to hold the plate for you, sweetheart? No, that's fine. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, now I don't really particularly want to distract you and mess up our dinner here. It's all right. My fondest memories. Christmas, waking up on Christmas morning, getting all my presents. Birthdays, being woken up in the morning, getting my birthday presents and having pancakes for breakfast and singing Las Mañanitas. Can you remember the song? Uh, hmm, not too well. Not Let's well see. enough to sing it. Let's go. Estas son las mañanitas que yeah. cantaba el rey David. That's pretty good. You que got it. Que canción Oops. es tan bonita las que se cantan aquí. You don't remember any of it, eh? No, I don't. I mean, I remember it, but not well enough mm -hmm. to sing it. And, uh, oh, all the different countries we visited and some of the sightseeing we did and ski trips, Boy Scout camp, uh, the south of France in the summer, mm -hmm. uh, home leave, traveling across the United States, all the places we visited. Mm, those peppers are looking good. Yeah, they are. Okay, ready to go upstairs? Yeah, now hang on. Let me just get in front of you this way. Okay, we're gonna go up. I gotta get the, me the meat. And then I guess I'll make the patties out here. And, uh... Ready? Yeah, go around my tripod. Now, yeah. too bad, because I'm not sure if I'm getting you, but hopefully you're not, I'm... You're getting the top of my head there. Are you sure? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, ready? And then we're gonna, we're gonna turn around and go right back out again. Okay. Once you get the vegetables roasting nicely, you come oh, in for a little break. Oh, that wine looks good. Yeah, it does look good, doesn't it? Sweetheart, you see that big glass? That's mine. I, I'll, you know, my hands are a little full greasy. Of, uh, olive oil, but I will serve me a little wine. Can you? Are you going to be able to manage down down the stairs? No, I'm not going to take it with me. I'm just going to take a nice little sip. Okay, good for you. And that's yeah. it. Oh, this is the wine Axel bought just now. I, I almost went with Folonari. him. Folonari. Thank you, sweetheart. Cheers. Folonari, Valpolicella, probably, or Bordolino. As you approach your second half of the century. Thank you, darling. Sweetheart, I wish you as much success, continued success and happiness as in the first half. Thank you. Cheers. I am getting to the second half. There's no doubt about it. Okay, now. So what do you think about our sisters being so far away? Oh, I think it's so sad. They do make you know, an effort, though, to show up, which is kind of nice. Yeah, they do. But it is terrible that, you know, we're having our lives, and there they are, a million miles away. Okay, ready? Uh, yeah. Okay, this time I'll follow you. Okay. Because I think that's kind of easier. And out we go. Got the door there? Thank you. Boy, that wine sure tastes good, doesn't it? Yes, it does. That'd be good, Jill. Hi, Dad. <sighs> Mmm. Oh. Ah. Sweet. No, it's good. It's nice and dry. It's very nice, Dad. Nice Four wine. Oh, it's, uh, it's terrific. Good deal for 12 bucks. We're drinking the good stuff. Okay, I'm glad you all like it. It's absolutely delicious, Dad. Now, uh, what I'm looking for is my... Uh, my new extension. Oh, what come on, honey. Peach? Come on, sweetie. Orange. You know the white? Yeah. 
Where is it? Back of my car. Okay. Right. That's not stolen. Nobody stole it. You know what I did? I put, patched up some extensions. I sort of trimmed. Yeah, I know. Short. And so I said, the hell with this. So I went with more than 100 feet. That's a nice one. I'll tell you what, though, the trimmer is not going to work on that the hedge. Is big. What, you, what you need to do with that hedge is the, the big clippers. You've got to go with individual. Yeah. You've got to clip the individual branches. Yeah. See, see over the wood stove? I, I cut back a huge bit I last see, year. I see. Great. Sarah, yeah. what do you have there? But it doesn't work with that trimmer. You can see the tree. Big tree. The chestnut. It's butternut. a butternut. Yeah. Yeah. Butternut. What's it made out of? It's made out of. Okay, I. I forget it. Some old goat. Yeah, some old goat. Some old yellow goat. No, I think it was dyed. Yeah, I think so too. We can always use Yeah, terrific. It's a great one. Did you notice Virginia's hedge? Did you notice the hedge in front of the yellow house? Did you notice the hedge? No, no, I haven't. You should draw next time you drive by there. You did that? Look, I did it with the clip with your trimmer and the hundred foot extension. Our trimmer. Yeah, our trimmer. Yeah, the hundred foot extension. Now you have another. <laughs> Hi, Sarah. Uh, That's a big feet. face in my camera. Hi. That's it's a untangled. big face. Sarah, do a song that you that you um. Hang on. Yeah. Let me give you my Hang microphone. On. Thanks. And Beth. you can do a little song that you're learning in your theater camp. In your wonderful, fantastic, no, no. incredibly I don't fabulous. Want it. I don't want it. Okay, wait. Now, what you need to do? Oops. Sorry. 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 Okay. Because we hate, we don't like our lines to show. And then. Like that. Cool, I got a microphone. Yes, you do. You and Daddy are now mic'd. So Dad's don't breathe in too? it. Yeah, Dad's got his too. Now, except I'm mic'd too, Sarah. Hi, Mike. Sarah, let's do a duet. <laughs> okay. What do you want to sing? Doe, a deer. A female deer, Ray, a drop of golden sun. Me, a name I call myself. Far a long, long way to run. I don't, I don't think you need to be on a mic for that. <laughs> you got a little mic right there. Oh, yeah. But, 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 but hang on. I had to drown out Dad. Yes, you do have to do that, Dad, because, you know. Yeah, Dad doesn't really sing on tone, right? No, he doesn't. He Poor tries, dad. though. Poor Dad. Your Dad tries. Poor Dad. Okay. Okay. So you've got a mic, so it's not that important to be really loud. Okay. Okay, so we'll sing something delicate, like. La, 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 la. I see clouds, I see sky so blue. Um, no, maybe not that. Maybe. Um. Sarah, why don't you ask your daddy a question? Why don't you interview your dad? Dad, I'm interviewing you. Okay. okay. Not so loud, please. Okay. Yeah, Sarah, don't you have a mic. And careful. Oh, you, oh, you, you got a short, you got a short forget, leash there. Don't forget to look at the camera. All right. Sarah, don't forget to look at the camera, even though. And here is our friend. Um, dad. 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 Now. What are you doing? I am cooking dinner for the family. Are you having fun? I'm having wait, a lot wait, of fun. Wait. Sarah, Sarah, uh, okay. talk normally because the mic is right there. So you can just talk absolutely normally. Okay. What are you doing? I'm cooking dinner. Are you having fun? I'm having a great deal of fun. Good. Ask Daddy when he first saw Mom. Why? Oh, that's, that's completely off the subject. Yeah, that's off the subject and it's such an old story. Sarah, tell yeah. us a little bit about your summer. 
Well, I'm going to this really stinky theater camp. Oh, come on. So don't show this to anybody. Well, wait a minute. Let's start at the beginning. What about Chapin uh, June Jamboree? Oh, yeah. I went to June Jamboree, and June Jamboree is a lot of fun. Yeah. And What'd you we do went there? to Compo Beach and rollerblading. Yeah. And we went um, to the zoo, the Bronx Zoo. Right. Oh, what'd you see there? We saw lots of different cool animals, like, and we like, went like monkeys and giraffes and this emu. A what? I think an emu. What does it look like? It was a big bird. Oh. And I took lots of pictures, and did there were these. Did you see any rhino rhinos? No. But what about um, elephants? No. Elephants at the Bronx Zoo? There probably are, but we didn't see it. Okay. And we saw mice and bunnies. I love bunnies. And Sarah, what did you do after June Chamboree? I stayed at home for a week and then yeah. I came up Did you here. do anything exciting while you stayed at home? Not really. What about the baseball game? Oh, yeah! We what? went to a baseball game on Where? at Shea Stadium. Shea Stadium. Who at played? Shea Stadium, and it was the Mets against the Braves. Yes. And okay. Who, and who won the game? And and where are the Braves from? The Braves, right? Right. The Braves won the game. Where are the Braves from? Um, Ooh. California. No, the Utah? Atlanta Braves. Oh. Where's Atlanta? Georgia! Good. And uh, Sarah, what did you do after the baseball game? Where did you go next day? And there was this really funky guy named Mo, and he like hit this big home Mo run. Mo Vaughn, Mo Vaughn. Mo Vaughn. Camera lenses. And he... Um, Mo Vaughn? I never heard of Mo Vaughn. And he hit the scoreboard. He did hit the scoreboard. The Mets had a bad pitcher. And um, then I went to theater camp. No, wait a minute. Where'd you go before theater camp? Connecticut. No. Don't you have a friend? <gasps> yes. I went to Newport to visit my friend Harling. And uh, what's in Newport? Um, we went to Bailey's Beach Club uh -huh. and we had lots of fun. And we, um... Would you like to spend the summer in Newport? Probably, because here it's kind of... Well, there are more things to do in Newport. Really? Like what? Because there are, like, flower shows and all this fun stuff. And so it's a little more interesting because... Sharon, there aren't like as many children here. Oh yeah, there's not too many children here. You're the only child here. Yeah, like, except child. today you had a guest. Yeah, yeah but she was but a little girl. She was a little girl, and she well, she had a lot of energy. She had a lot of so energy, she made, but she, she was she kind of gimme gimme type. Gimme gimme. She was really sweet. Uh huh. But she kind of wanted, and we found stars in the dirt. Well, you know, she's an only child. And here I so have only a children, star. especially if she's still at home. You know, they haven't learned about sharing yet. See the star? Oops. But I thought you did something really nice, Sarah. Ah. I thought you did something really nice because you wanted to teach her about sharing. So I liked the way you said, well, we're going to divide them up and one for you and one for me. And then there was an extra one and you said, and you can have the extra one. I thought that was very nice because that will sink into her consciousness and she'll remember that, hopefully. Bill, it smells good. I'm getting really hungry. Okay, have we had enough? Yep. Oh, don't touch the lens, please, sweetheart. Okay, I did. Because the lens, yeah. All right, let me just, let's get ready for a goodbye. A goodbye, yo, pain. I'm leaving, I am. That looked good. <laughs> Is that what you're learning in theater camp? No. What are you going to do in theater camp? In theater camp, we're learning stuff like 
put on your Sunday clothes when you feel down and out. Trot down the street and have your picture took. 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 Uh, Is that, that proper English? I don't like that. Took. Just like a dream, your spirits seem to turn about. That Sunday shine is a certain sign that you feel as fine as you look. Um, beneath your parasol, the world is all a smile. Um, I forget. Wait. Just think Billy, say goodbye while Sarah's thinking. Bye. Um, Adios, Afida saying sayonara. Okay, see you later. Okay, I remember. Okay. Um, beneath your parasol, the world is all a smile. And you feel brand new down to your toes. Get out your feathers, your. That sausage. It's like get out your feathers. Okay, so we got time for the finale because I'm running out of battery. And wait, it goes like let me remember. Get out your feathers, your something your la and lathers, your beat your buckles and bows. For there's no blue Monday in your Sunday clothes. Da -da -da -da. Okay. And then there's another one that goes, you're a grand old flag, you're a high flying flag, and forever in peace may you wave. You're the emblem of the land I love, the home of the free and the brave. Every heart beats true for under red, white, and blue. Uh-huh. Where there's never a boast or brag. Should old acquaintance be forgot, keep your eye on the grand old flag.